Today we are going to learn what wiretap enterprise integration pattern IE EIPA is and how we can implement that uh, enterprise integration pattern using Apache Camel. So our agenda for today, very simple. What is wiretap? Let's just have a like theoretical understanding of this design pattern and then we will try to do our workshop. So first of all, what is wiretap? Wiretap is a simple way of sneaking into somebody else's conversation without interrupting their conversation, i.e. like you know, uh, trying to cheekily uh, listening to somebody else's conversation, private conversation. Uh, this concept typically came from a telephonic world where a conversation uh, is happening between two parties and somebody has like you no know, uh, connected their own phone and these guys are not aware so they, it is basically not interrupting ongoing conversation as you can see in the image um, so in the enterprise integration uh, pattern world what does that really mean so what we are saying is if the business problem we have is how can i inspect messages that travel on a point to point channel right um, so let's just first have an understanding of of this pattern so wiretap is a fixed recipient list with two output channels right so you have one channel uh, over here and then you have another channel over here and a message is traveling on that okay it consumes messages of the input channel as i said this this is our input channel over here and it publishes the unmodified just just remember this is the keyword over here it's the unmodified message to both output channels so it doesn't actually um, you know injects any information or it doesn't change anything into the incoming message it simply puts a filter okay or you can say like you no know, it creates two pipes out of this one pipe which is continuing and then using the another pipe it just copies the data onto another pipeline so you can do whatever you want to do with 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 that message um, so wiretap allows you to route messages to a separate location while they are being forwarded to the ultimate destination as i just said so this is our ultimate destination we just inject this pipe over here um, uh, from the technical implementation perspective especially in the camel world the wiretap uses a thread pool to process the tapped messages so it doesn't really interrupt um, the the performance of the existing workflow it has another thread which is going on over here which will be taking that message and it will be processing it it's, it's really beautiful stuff over here all right so so the business problem or the use case which we are going to implement it let's say given an existing route for money transfer so i have a route i have an application which is used to do some money transfer in in my bank okay the the new requirement is that add a new audit service without interrupting the existing flow okay perfect this is the problem or this is the new requirement came from our our product team okay and straight away we can see we can uh, use wire wiretap uh, pattern over here um, so it says so i can use the transactions for fraud check so okay this is the requirement that over here we want to do fraud check on the incoming transactions without interrupting the the existing transaction so the the fraud check or auditing can have can happen offline if if the the you know another application or another team suspect they can later on you know roll back that transaction or or they can you know contact the parties or maybe they can they can block the future transactions so that's our very simple use case let's just directly dive into our code now so to begin with i have written this uh, simple wiretap program over here my assumption over here is that you are following my previous videos you have set up your environment so for this particular tutorial or for this particular demo, what I am going to do is I'm going to use Rabbit, okay, which I have uh, running in, in my Docker environment. So let's say this is our existing route. I have a Rabbit uh, sender uh, route, okay, where all the money or the transactions are coming. Uh, what I'm, and what I do uh, with that transaction, I enrich with some, some information like, you know, maybe date or, or I just make sure all the fields are valid. And after that, I just send that to my receiver. Very simple workflow. We have a money coming in and it's going on to uh, another route. Let's just try to run this program and see what it's really doing. So if I run this program, it has run this. It's a simple spring application. Now let's just jump to uh, our rabbit MQ. Okay, perfect. So I can see it has created receiver queue and it has created a sender queue. So 
what we're going to do is we are going to publish a transaction on sender. So let's just have a quick look how our DTO looks like. So I have my transaction DTO. So it has transaction ID, it has a sender's account ID, receiver's account ID, it has some amount, it has a currency, and it also has a transaction date. So I am not going to expect transaction date from, from the upstream. I am going to inject that information so we can actually you know, see that yes, we can, we can take the message, we can enrich our information into it. So let's just try to create a quick uh, sample JSON and just try to send this transaction over here. Let's come back over here and here is our JSON representation of, of that DTO. So I have transaction ID one, I'm sending uh, from account ID 100, receiver is 200, I'm sending 500 and my currency is great, uh, great British pound over here. So let's just publish a message. Okay, come back to our root. Okay, as you can see, uh, root simply said money is transferred. This is the transaction ID. Uh, just, just note one thing, the transaction date was not given in the payload. However, I managed to inject it. How did I do that? Let's just have a quick look. So message came over here. I unmarshaled the message into uh, this DTO. Okay, and after that, I, um, I called this enrich with uh, weather DTO. Okay, uh, so DTO is over here. Actually, this should be, we should be calling it enrich tran transaction DTO. It's a copy paste from my previous exercise. Perfect. All right, so what I simply did, I took the message, I transformed into this DTO. Uh, and after that, I'm simply sending the transaction date. I wrote this DTO back to my exchange as a set message. Okay, and then I am sending on this route called receiver. Simple stuff, okay? And now let's quickly come back to our queues. So sender earlier had one message. Now the message has been processed by camel and message has been sent to receiver. So if I come to receiver now and I say get message, you can see the message is here. Exactly the message which we are seeing on our console over here. That tra transaction ID is one and it has a date of uh, 19 past one at zero four seconds. All right, good stuff. Now, if we go back to our uh, presentation, the, the requirement was that we have an existing um, application. Now, what we simply need to do is we need to take the, the transaction and put it into another queue or another business process so we can do the fraud check without interrupting the the, the workflow. Okay, so what we are simply going to do now is we are going to put a wiretap over here. Okay, so I've got my message. Okay, so I am I said, okay, I still do the unmarshalling, which is fine. Uh, now I'm simply going to put my wiretap over here. And in my wiretap, what, I, what do I have to do is I have to give another destination. So let's send it to a, a destination direct called audit transaction. So I've got a constant defined over here earlier. Okay, so just, just to um, make it clear, what we are simply doing is we are taking the message which is coming on this route, sender, sender. After using the unmarshalling, we are simply sending it to wiretap. This wiretap can happen before that, but over here, I'm just doing it after unmarshalling it. Right, and it's going to another route called direct audit transaction. So, what what Camel will do at this point is Camel will take the message, create a copy of it. It will be a deep copy, okay, and it will send on this route. And what it simply means is now I'm I'm going to have two copies of a message, which one will continue on the existing route, and another copy will be sent to this particular route for for whatever like you know fraud check or or auditing purposes. Once we have done that, what we need to do is now we need to define another route, okay? And we can say now from this, this is where I'm sending, just remember, right? When the message comes over here on this particular route, I like to process it one more time, okay? Why? Maybe just, maybe I like to do some, some uh, checks um, and so for simplicity purposes, I'm going to call the another enrich DTO, okay? It does the same thing, i.e. it's also going to put the date onto it. After I've done that, I need to marshal the message one more time. 
Okay, so I'm just going to copy this this thing so it can be set to new uh, message on the exchange. And finally, I am going to send it to my rabbit queue. Okay, so I'm going to copy this from here. Let's paste it. A uh, little bit of formatting. Okay, this time I am not going to send to receiver, obviously, because receiver is already um, happening. This time I am actually going to send to another queue which I have created called audit, right? And my routing key is also audit. Very simple stuff. So let's just, just try to understand. I've got a message. Why tapped it? Okay, so the, the, the existing workflow is not interrupted. The money or the transaction will still continue to happen. Receiver will still get the transaction. But what I have done is I have started another thread or another process to do the transaction verification, i.e. fraud check. If the team which is responsible for that, if they suspect they can, they can stop the transaction, they can block the transaction or they can maybe suspend the account for time being. OK, so that's what we have done over here. Now, let's try to restart the program. So if I re restart the program very simply, I'm expecting to have another queue in the rabbit. Let's just go back to our rabbit console in queues. Perfect. As you can see, we already had receiver and sender. I've got now audit transactions over here. So come back to our sender queue one more time. And let's just uh, copy paste another transaction, which we had created previously. This time I'm saying my transaction ID is two. OK, sender is still 100 and receiver is also 200 and amount is 500. Maybe like you no, know, when when I see suddenly like you no, know, too many transactions from uh, some one account and sending a large amount of money, maybe that's that's some something funky going on over here. It might not be, but maybe. Okay, that would be the time like you now where the fraud detection team can basically take some action because they're suddenly seeing you know uh, too many transactions from same account, right? From where the sender is same and receiver is also same. Maybe some sort of hack had gone, or it it could be a, like you no know, general reason, but who who knows? But for our use case, if I publish the message now over here and assume everything is fine, okay, I think everything is fine. Program has not spitted any error or has not thrown any exception. This is transaction ID 2. This is my message over here. And what I'm expecting now is I am expecting one message on my audit transaction. There we are. And I've got two messages on my receiver queue. If you remember, we had sent um, one message two minutes ago and we have sent a new one. Now I can have another application, you know, which can be reading on audit transaction. And if I see entry over here on the audit transaction, they can take some actions of it. So that was our quick uh, workshop uh, explaining what wiretap is and how we can very easily implement wiretap without interrupting the existing application or workflow. Hope you enjoyed it. Okay, thank you very much for your time. I'll see you in the next video.